Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. You're, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Buggy. Back with my guy, fucking Henry, dude. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's good, dude. How you, How doing, you doing, man? It's been fucking a long home. time. So, who do, for those who don't know, I went to high school with this guy. We were in a fucking dance battle crew at fucking Collingswood. What were we called? Bro, I don't even know. It was I don't, tough. I don't it was a long the, time ago, bro. I don't remember the name either, Very but long um, time. but yeah. So we 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 used to do some shit back in the day. Fucking uh, link every day after school. I would get like a a nick of fucking weed. <laughs> <laughs> get a fucking blunt. Save the money from lunchtime, bro. and we would fucking make choreograph yeah. fucking dance battle shit, dude. Yeah. So how have you been since then? You've been doing that all the time still? Yeah, man. Well, not as much as I used to. Because obviously I transitioned into rap and, and drumming and shit. Yeah, but since since high school, man, like, uh, I kept on dancing. I kept on battling. But then I started, it wasn't paying the bills. I wasn't winning no matches or nothing. Facts. Omna was a biased thing. Or I didn't work <laughs> out too much. But, hey, it is what it is. I was there for the for the fun of it and the culture, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I strayed away from it. But since COVID, it's been giving me time to get myself together. Mm. And so a lot of events is coming out right now. And With B-Boys and shit. B-Boys, all styles. What that is, is like, you can pick up this type of oh, style, yeah. that and, style. And it's an Olympic fucking thing now. Yeah. Too. Oh, it came a long way. That's crazy, bro. In Paris, 2024. So, yeah. So I was more of the pop locker, the crumper. And he was more of the b-boy break dancing shit. Yeah, we was doing this for TV production class. Yep, <laughs> it was yep. fucking fire though. Yeah, we. What do we get? What grade did we get? We got like a C or something, right? I don't fucking. <laughs> I don't know. know if it was the moves or not, but <laughs> no, it was it was probably the T because we focused on the dance more than the TV production. Yeah, we pretty much just recorded ourselves dancing. Bro, you was coming in high then. I didn't even know. What do you mean? Like I don't know. Not, you was crumping though. I know uh, you was crumping for sure. Well, this is the thing. When I it was my first day in Collingswood, and Where I don't you know, coming like, from again, Marlton. It was a weird transition. But as the new kid, it was it was funny because it was I was like the wigger in Marlton. Everyone hated me <laughs> because of how I <laughs> because of how I dressed and shit. And I got, right, yeah. they tried to kick me out because I, I got written up a lot for cell phones and shit. Like the teachers didn't know how to handle the kids who had cell phones because we were the first generation with it. So they just wrote you up every time you got caught on your cell phone. And the last time I got written up, the, the teacher tried to say I was blasting like heavy metal music. And I was like, I mean, like everyone hates me because like, of how I dress. And you think I'm blasting heavy metal right now? I don't, I didn't even have headphones or none of that. So my first day in Collingswood, I'm walking down the hallway, and everyone has their headphones in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was Everybody. like, what the fuck? How, yeah. how the fuck did I basically get kicked out of a Those school? a lot of spoiled for kids, having, Oh, shit, there's a fly in here, dude. Don't, don't hook my shit, bro. That's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> be a bitch. These shore flies are no fucking joke, bro. Yeah, man. But, um... But yeah, when I when I was walking down the hallway and saw everybody with headphones in their head, and then in class, this was like the year they let everybody choose if they wanted to pay attention or not, and you could just sit in the back with your headphones on the whole time. But I feel like that's every towards the end of the year, to be honest. No, it was it was like a new thing that year that I went because I went halfway through my junior year, Bro, and then I my w- senior year it wasn't allowed. The senior year they didn't let you have headphones and shit like you start well, all the kids trouble. that had tardies it was letting them like hey if you go clean up the stuff in the gymnasium yeah, whatever we go, erase all of it fuck that crazy <laughs> they would do shit like that but that's what i'm saying my, my first day like compared to marlton whereas like no one danced like i was like one of the only dudes who did fucking i got in like two dance battles the first day of school one in the cafeteria and one in the bathroom <laughs> Who was it? And was, I was, won. It, was it? Was it Ish and, them? and I won. No, Ish didn't dance. Like Ish wouldn't like battle yet at that point. Mm. At, Ish was like just starting to dance and shit at that right. point. But um, he's the reason why I, I started dancing. Really? Yeah, because look, in eighth grade, I was I was from Woodland. Mm-hmm. I'm originally from Woodland, and we didn't have a high school, so we got transferred. We're, we're transitioning just like you went into Collinswood. Oh, so you were new to Collingswood too? Oh yeah, because like just like you, I was relatable. I was the only Asian kid around the black community and mm-hmm. the Hispanic community, mm-hmm. and I could I didn't know how to be Asian. <laughs> I, I did not. 
That's crazy. I did not dude. know how to do that. So that's crazy to think about. But but when I went to your house, it was super. It's because they fixed it up. That's my parents working hard. That's uh-huh. another story. Because I was born in Camden, mm-hmm. and six six and Ferry downtown. Born in Cooper. But I meant like the vibe, like the culture of your home. When I walked in, it was it was it was very because that's that's just all my parents. It's traditional. True. So I grew up traditional background, but outside, but you don't really feel it. Yeah, outside you didn't, you didn't feel it anywhere else. No, the culture yeah. outside was different. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about. And I'm the smallest kid, too. I'm only like 5'4", but at the time, I'm like always Mm 4' something. Because I'm one of the kids who was like in Marlton where I wasn't... My mom worked her ass off, so Mm -hmm. she was like... She was just never home. She was always working and shit. Relatable. Same with the dad. So like whenever I saw my dad, it was just like a little bit. But I basically got raised by slowly the TV and the internet and how it got connected into itself. So you go with computers already? Yeah. No, well, like the the internet didn't really become popping until like I was like 13, you know, 12. Did you at least have computers in school? no, not, no, they were there. Yeah, Martin, learning how to typing that? and shit. Learning, but, M- Mavis Beacon. Yeah, yeah re- regular <laughs> shit, regular shit like that. But I'm talking like uh, video games playing online and it not cutting yeah, out. Like it, it took it took a while for that to like be successful before it was like everybody was dealing with lagging constantly. Always. It took a long time for that to be. Oh, when AOL and the yeah, Net AOL, Zero, in the beginning it was trash. Was it was like phase. it was a bitch to yeah. work with. But no, you would really go on the grew- internet and you would see anything. There was nothing, no holds bar. Like you would see anything, and that's what I'm saying. So like, whereas when you would go to your house, I f- it was super like structured in that sense. Whereas when I would go home from this preppy Marlton town of everybody just. Being weird yeah, you come in the to spot. my house, there's a shrine. I, I go home and I'm like, I could pretty much just do what I wanted, and I'd learned what I wanted at the time. Mm-hmm. So that's where I think I gained a lot of my favoritism mm-hmm. towards hip hop more than rock and other shit. Like I, felt I like just it gave us colors, man. I just naturally dove into it. It did. It yeah. did. The internet was a weird place. So, but but you're relating to it in a in a different sense oh, because yeah, like in Marlton, it's so spread out, and the houses and everything, the neighborhoods are so far apart from each other. Big roofs, and then in ceilings. Collingswood, I had to walk to school. Yeah, like it was very very different. <laughs> but for some reason, I loved it. It was way better. Everybody was more real. Like there was no fake shit. Like if someone it had something to prove, I think Woodland going into Collingswood has something to do. It was that. awesome. Every like, mm-hmm. if anybody had a problem with someone, it wasn't yelling at each other so the teachers could break it up. Like no. it was handled after school. The geeks after were friends. With, the geeks were friends with the jocks. Yeah, you know, everybody was friends with everybody. That was, was when like, anime was just we still weird. I I can't believe how different it was, dude. Mm-hmm. Comparing that to Marlton, because mm-hmm. like I said, like I was like. Hated on because of how I dressed, and I was. It became a rebel thing. Like, oh, you want to call me a wigger? But when you came over, you My, dressed just like everybody else. Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. Everybody dressed like that. It's crazy. But that's the thing. When I moved to Collingswood, I, I did act. I got in shape a little bit. Uh-huh. I wore big shirts because I was chunky. That's why I wore big shirts. And then when I heard someone call me a wigger, I didn't know what it was. So I started wearing bigger shirts as, as a rebellion. So I started wearing triple XL when I was five four. Like, <laughs> so my shirts were like. Harlow Shake vibes. <laughs> so so I, like, I tried imitating wearing those big there. t-shirts, buying at the corner store at the bodegas for five dollars, ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Was it ten bucks? I think it was five bucks back. In, yeah, it's still five dollars to this day. That's hilarious, dude. Yeah. So, the before, vibes. so kids, kids would go to go to the corner store before school started, or the day before, and grab a t-shirt mm-hmm. from Woodland. Who can afford new shirts? Hollister. Or the Arab economy. Just every day. That's I what the spoiled kids were. Remember, yeah. yeah, man, it's crazy. See, and that's the thing too. Like, it was weird. The Hollis, that Hollister phase was so fucking weird. Preppy that preppy phase. vibe. Because I was in Marlton, where every every kid just wore that, and then I came to Collingswood and I saw that happen. I saw everybody start to wear to wear Hollister and preppy. It was really weird. But like I said before, that I wore shirts bigger because I was out of shape. And when I moved to Collingswood, I moved in with my dad, and I obviously started working out and training with him. So I started. I yeah, sh- we were both I scrawny started, though. I started. Yeah, but I. But it was better than I was though. I was like I was a chunker. So, and I, if so, I remember, you didn't have none of those hair yeah, too. <laughs> so, so, dude, I just I, I grew out the mane. I need it right now. <laughs> the mane, fucking um, <laughs> supernatural. But when I was a new kid, it was like I went from this school where they hated how I dressed, hated who I was. Mm-hmm. Like no one really gave me a chance just because of all of that. To Collingswood, the first day, like I remember, mad at the chicks, like wanted to hook up with me. Got in two dance battles. It was just like, oh shit, the new kids here, mm-hmm. and it was just like such a fucking. 
It's so crazy how they're that close. That's that, why I got into break dancing, bro. Just because you ish everybody, I was ready mm-hmm. to battle anybody at any dance. Yep. And when and, and at that point, I was like, yo, if th- this is like something I want to do, I don't want to like. We're not gonna play basketball. No, nope. we're not gonna make the team. No. Not making it on the team. No, I'm so, too short. Definitely not in Collinsville. Collinsville was nice. Not even volleyball. But, um, nothing. Cherokee was nice too, but it was like it was obviously that higher the D- Division bro, One type. You're of not school. athletic, tall useful it wasn't that though it was honestly the, the coaches the coaches yeah i feel like that has a huge influence i couldn't deal with like being yelled at all the time like it's not a, it's like i don't even think it's an ego it's just like i just couldn't do it like i hated running and all of practice is mainly running yeah for every sport <laughs> so. you know i remember not being there was favoritism i had the nice face mask for football is there any and then sport where I cannot run? Another person was just like, I want it. He was he he gave, ended up being the starting running back. Mm-hmm. So it, coach was like, No, you gotta give it to him. Just like that. And I quit that same day. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't running no more. The like the, the And I was the smoking weed. Me, like, and I was smoking five, weed. Was I was crazy. smoking weed from a young kid, so I was gonna get kicked out regardless. No matter what I did because of the weed. Those were nickel bag days, right? Back in the days, yeah. Little baggies. Well, I was selling jars. weed. That's the thing. I was selling weed in Marlton. And they tried to get me, but they didn't. I They they got me for headphones, which wasn't me. <laughs> so, what? dude, I was in ISS all the time. It was so weird. It was that deep? <laughs> yeah, dude, it was weird. Like, I got written up some, like, 50, 60 times in the first four or five months of school. In my junior year. All cell phone write-ups. And it's because I was selling weed. I was on my phone saying, yo, meet me in B Hall. smell like Meet it. me in B105. No, it wasn't about weed. It was just about my phone. The, oh, all right. Cause I, but, but I'm saying I was on my phone all the time because I was like, yo, meet, don't me, like in, you, bro. meet me in C Hallway at 1245. You know, it's almost like they in want to lunch. Want, they demand respect. <laughs> Dude, it was like weird. It was, think about it. I was like, so, I'm like, so Respect fucking, your elders. I'm so fucking stupid. Which you should. You I'm should. so fucking stupid. I would show up to school with like 15 grams in my pocket. And before her, yo, what? Wait, wait, hold before, on, you were really just pulling up. This is in like Marlton. This is in Marlton. Yeah, in Marlton. I was right. pulling up with fifteen grams, just Damn. dime bagged out in my pocket, and all of them would be sold before homeroom. I'd get in the school at like seven fifteen, say hi to everybody, do it at the two, two, three, four bathrooms that I would do mm-hmm. on the way, mm-hmm. and by the time I'm in homeroom, fifteen are sold. I have one hundred fifty bucks in my pocket. That's crazy. And I spent all the money I made. That's to, a come up. No, I did that all soft, sophomore and all into junior year. And I made all that money and I spent it all on like video games and I got rock band. And that's actually how I drum. It's because of rock band. I didn't listen to rock music. I only listened to rap. But yeah. rock band is what got me into rock music. So ah, the disco, drumming and yeah, everything. So, so Disco Biscuits would have never been a thing had I not sold weed and bought rock band. And bought like rock band and Guitar Hero. Like I bought every single game. Like wow. every version, and of you know, it. before video games, you had to go to these shows, or I know somebody that was into. I it didn't to, go to the shows. I never. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, like, so, to be able to, someone has to introduce you to it. That's crazy. Yeah, it's the difference now with technology. Yeah, it's different. It's like how we're growing up since dancing and rapping. Now, how mm-hmm. we just branched off, and now everybody can just do anything from the jump. Like, that's what someone said it the other day. Like the scarcity of shit. Back then, like if you missed a TV, that's the worst. Like, scarcity. If you, missed, if you missed a TV show, then you missed it. Like you weren't gonna see that chance unless you like were at. There was home. no YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So like, if you missed a fight, you missed it. Like think or about. If you had that. a brother or sibling, like yo, wake up, we gotta watch DBZ Dude, right remember now. Pay-per-view? Remember pay per view? Remember when pay per view was like had to be a thing? Now it's just like every, the McGregor fights tonight. How many people are not paying for that? A lot. Mm. A lot of people are not paying for that. They're just going to fucking stream it for free. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, a lot the, of money that people... But that's why the music industry, there's no money. What you were saying earlier, there's mm-hmm. no money in dancing. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with art it's, across it's the board. It's been so exploited. The only thing in art that really sells consistently is art itself. Paintings. Like, yes. that's the one thing that people, if you have a unique style or you only make a little bit, but depending it's on what you're going... something uncommon I can't see. You can, you can name your price, too. Like, what I was going... I said this on the last podcast. Depending on what you go through, you can just price it whatever you want. 
So, like, I was going through some shit when I made this. It doesn't matter if it looks like other shit. So, were you going through some shit when you were selling the 15 grams? What was no. the money being used for and no. shit like that? I just told you, Rock Band. <laughs> I bought video games and shit. I don't believe I just, just only that. I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. I didn't buy shit. Getting the console, then getting the equipment. Like, I already had the console, but I was buying mad games. I was just ordering food. No, if I'm correct, it was ordering, going for like 100 or like Ordering food out all the time. The that was a lot of money. I was just ordering a lot schoolers. of food. And I was smoking for free, too. So I was like smoking a lot. So, so you, you got to keep your habit going. So yeah. like it was it was to smart, smoke for free smart guy over and, here, and you know? buy shit that I wanted. So, but it's such an easy way. And, and it was super legal then. It's not like super. it is now. It's, you would have gotten probation for like two years. But clearly the weed wasn't that stanky if I was pulling up with 15 grams in my pocket. I mean, I did have it double bag. Bro, but. no, let me tell you how the state of mind. Somebody brought it up to me on Discord. They were like, yo, remember when we used to say we don't want exotic. We want we want the Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Because no, people can't I never handle did that. But that's no. Hilarious. Well, the kids, kids were doing that, bro. Because they could have handled it. Was it. more expensive, like ten for ten dollars for two grand or twenty bucks for two grams or twenty. That's bucks why for there's grand. a five five. Yo, what's up? What up, B? You got five? You trying to go fives? Get a whole, get a whole dub, a dime mm. right there. Mm-hmm. Nobody can ever afford a dub. See, but five bucks <laughs> a little nick for yourself. Like, yo, get your own nick. I'll have my nick. And, and that's what I'm saying. That that's only it. happened in Collingswood. Like Collingswood, like my dad was strict, so I didn't smoke every day after school. But once I got to senior year, like, and I had, I found the kids that I would chill with after school and shit. None. Of, and by the way, no one smoked in school. Like no me one. and me and Cash are, are the only two stoners. I rest really, in peace, Cash. Cash, yeah, Cash is. That's like the only person that I remember from Collingswood smoking. You know, he's the reason why we I smoke. The but reason why he's the reason why a lot of people smoke. Oh man, let's just, that's just hilarious. I, I was only 14 years old. The only kid, the, talking about prep, the preppy stage, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't have money for it. My mom couldn't afford it either. So I wore clothes that was back in woodland time. Mm-hmm. I was kind of embarrassed, to, sh- shameless to wear that type of stuff. We all only had a couple outfits though in but school. Here walks in cash, hoodie up, black down. Black hoodie every day. All black day. hoodie <laughs> all everywhere he goes. That's why I've been wearing a black hoodie a lot. Like new it, generation, symbolis- EPG, symbolistically from <laughs> when you that the, those group, yeah, dude. yeah. <laughs> from when that happened. Like I just been hoodied up ever since Cash passed for the most part. It's kind of like keeping his style with you. Yeah, unless it's like ridiculously hot out. I'd be thinking about that. Yeah, but um, I I just been hoodied up, and that's like symbolically a shout out to Cash, but. Yeah, Cash is the reason for a lot of things. Cash is the reason a lot of them started rapping. And you know, it's, he's he's very underrated, unspoken of. Nah, he's like, his lyricism is retarded. It's yeah. retarded. He's a show-up person, Did you see too. the tribute? Yeah, I did. The little tribute, John? I did. I seen a lot of people's, but, you know, the one that stuck out to me the most was Hogue. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the one showing the most emotion on there, too. And it, mm-hmm. it's just love, because I could picture the whole entire thing happening getting stuck in the window <laughs> <laughs> yeah when he told yeah, the he story. told me all them stories bro it was, it was <sighs> and that's great. that's the thing like um situations like that like when i documented i didn't know what i was doing bro i didn't have a camera i did it on my friend's iphone and like ran so that's out of why space. that quality you know what yeah, it felt real though yeah i didn't have anything else but i needed to document somehow you know what i mean so i did what i could and um, I did have a camera, but my boys had an autofocus, and all you could hear was the autofocus. Like, like kick, 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 kick. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds sandy. So I, d- I was like, I'd rather capture this on an iPhone and just get the everybody telling their story about it. Mm-hmm. But like that day, Hoagie was the one who embraced me the most. And it was like such an like unexpected thing, but it like made the most sense at the same time, if that makes sense. And when I recorded that, thing and then a couple months later that happened Mm -hmm. like the last thing i expected was anything to really come of that but now that footage of him telling that story has become like a major staple for a lot of people yeah like a clip from that a clip from that audio i've seen i've seen teddy bears being made that that was selflessness with his voice in it someone made teddy bears from that clip talking about cash but it was him saying like just hold your head up i love y'all and and then I got like another clip when it was the, the action. It's, it's just weird how that shit connects. And then like wow. this, this is what fucks me up. Like I haven't told anybody this, but the next, when we were at his viewing, 
the other person that really consoled me during that whole time was Derek Scott. So, oh man, from rest ca- in peace, Derek Scott, too, man. From yeah, rest in peace, of course. From Cash's, it was Jose, and then Jose went, and then at Jose's, it was Derek, and then Derek went. So from there, I realized like it was too much of a trending pattern for me, and I another one of my friends died, and I couldn't I couldn't pull up to it. Like I had to stop the curse, whatever the fuck was happening. So trying to like digest these things, like in my last podcast, we were talking. My boy was talking about depression, and mo- it's not depression when you're mourning. It's just like a state of what the fuck really is all this shit. And um, trying to make sense when it doesn't make sense. Yeah, when when shit like that happens, and like I got no sense. Yeah, it's retarded, and then you're just trying to like everything in your life is a party, and like with music, making music and shit. But when that shit happens, it's like. What do you do? Bro, it's different. It feels like you'll never be prepared for it. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, this shit's fucked, man. That's why you gotta love us now. Love yourself. Love everybody around you. Mm-hmm. Love now. Facts. They don't talk about love like that anymore. Mm-hmm. But that's why, like, I had to get some sort of documentation of it. I had to record, like, capture what, what cash meant to people. And... I have to do the same thing for Major Van Winkle, but the, obviously COVID happened, and this that happened during COVID, and I can't. So much has happened. Yeah, I can't can't really of COVID. maneuver. Now I can, but it's like it's a big task. But I feel like it's a it's like a duty I have to do. You know what I mean? I have to make sure that like everyone can say their piece about it because closure. Uh, there's no sent. There's like no real way to get it otherwise. And these guys are artists, like. Cash is like music is just in my head all the time. Yo, in his lyrics too, man. His lyrics has substance. Mm-hmm. Substance. But he hits, man. I go pyramid climbing. Oh, Sheesh. shit, bro. Let me handle that. Dude, these fucking um, all day. Amber Alerts. I just got it too. All day. These fucking See, Amber dude. Alerts. You haven't found them. And you had that shit on fucking silent, bro. Yeah, well, there's that, yo. We're going to show you guys something. We'll be right back. I want to know why, why, why You don't even try, try, try Don't you want to live this life You don't want to miss this time Nothing better here is possible If they're catching feelings I could really be the one to stop it all Who am I kidding? Listen to me your, that was that. This is this. Uh, no, you just put the ash in that. Yeah. Do you need the lighter? No, I don't. This is going to keep burning. Facts. I promise you. Just make sure that the cherry's there. All that yeah. good stuff. Get the baby cherry. So that's what I've been throwing more of my focus on. Instead of doing my break dance moves, I try to find the, the good strings. Yeah, this tastes nice. Weed is weed, brother. Weed is weed, but I've been smoking how? so many dabs. <laughs> dabs is great too. Dabs are fire, yo. I I cut my spending in <coughs> half. I cut my weed spending in half because, like I said, it doesn't really stick to you. I as used much as to this. sell weed, but now I don't, and it's a costly habit, yo. And it stinks too. I'm cool with life, but everything's better when you're high. So you might Agreed. as well. You might as well. Agree. Have this shit. So when I started dabbing a couple months ago, it's been such a cleaner high. I get so much more stoned. It's good for the whole day. Mm-hmm. Especially when you need it. Doesn't it doesn't smell like you're saying. Yeah, it doesn't smell. It evaporates. Yeah, it's different. Whereas this is going to fucking tear a house down. <laughs> this shit will tear a fucking house down. You smoke enough, the resin and all that stuff like that, the smoke... It builds up inside What's the ceiling. What's your favorite kind of smoking? What, you, what do you prefer? Indica? I prefer Oh, yeah, indica. of course. Well, as far as that goes, yeah, I'm an indica fan. I need indica. Smoking? Oh, uh, I prefer wax. Oh, what do you wax. prefer? Like wax, dabs? Yeah, like, I got what, a puff coat peak. What kind? What kind? Like, uh, I like sauce, shatter, diamonds. Oh, man, I don't even like the crumbs. It all depends on the strain. Uh-huh. It all depends on the strain. Yeah, you got to try this lemon sugar shit I have. It's fucking gnarly. You set me up later, bro. Let me Facts. up later. 
I'm, I love it. I'm a weed advocate now because I've grown up with weed, getting in trouble with weed. I can't believe it's the criminal act. And they, they, th- they, y'all aren't slick throwing that fucking bill in this fucking election. Mm-mm. Y'all are not slick. Not slick. Y'all got everybody to vote on that shit randomly because they wanted free weed. Oh, it to be legal. They're trying to bust the people that are trying to sell it. They're trying to tax it. Basically, it's all about taxing. Man, taxing isn't even real. I pay my taxes, though. And it's not real. <laughs> that, uh, no. <laughs> That's a stunt, though. Like, yeah, like, it don't. How much do you make? I pay my taxes. That's a good response. Why are you still paying rent? Still not claiming taxes. Dude, we, like, left the place to get away from taxes, right? And now everything's taxed. But you can write everything off if it's for your business, dude. You can write everything off. It's called I cooking just, the book. I just learned that <laughs> shit, bro. There's so many ways to finesse this shit. It's not even just so, finesse. It's so just working the, it. The way you hit the dabs, like you said you got a little puff thing. What is it? The puffco? The puffco peak? Oh, man, I'm so happy because... You didn't bring it? No, I did not. I had to. Damn. I didn't feel like cleaning it, putting on the thing. Yet. It, I came over here last second. Oh, true. Because the way I move, man, I'm always bouncing and leaving. Don't have a second word. Yeah. But I'll make a second for my boy Bugs over here, though, Facts. man. You feel me? It's love, Facts. man. I wanted to catch a little convo. I so, appreciate you, man. So when you told ask, me. Yeah, I want to I wanna ask you a couple questions. What were you saying? Yeah, no. When you invited me and told me about it, I was like, oh. It's a new experience for me. And that's what life is about, man. Like, make go yeah, grab like he's, ne- ne- he's never spoken in front of a camera before or nothing. It feels weird. But I know I'm, I'm in good hands. I'm, mm. I know I'm in a good area. I'm not a criminal. Facts. I'm just Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Henry smoking some good weed. Mm-hmm. Getting away from the, the typical drama mm. anybody deals with and just want to relax. Facts. I just want to capture the conversations and document all life, all around, everyone that I've been around through my life. Yo, and that's respect, because, you know, not everybody... So that's why having you here, like, as a kid that was was in my dad, the one I built it with, because there was a couple other in it, but... I guess I'm the main star. Me and you primarily were the ones who were linking. Who was trying to do something, making moves, making choreography. Mm Mm-hmm. Dude, the choreography was so fun. It's easy as fuck. I felt like when you left, everything died out. I was the sole one. Ish and them started rapping. Mm -hmm. Because they see me break dancing. I moved moved to Arizona to start rapping. Mm. That's why I moved to Arizona. So, but when I was there, I saw that. I saw everybody. I saw everybody. Well, Ish started rapping in school, though. Right. He was he was rapping in high school. Uh, right. That's that probably that's actually what actually why he wouldn't battle me because that was right when I went there. It was right when he started rapping and kind of stopped dancing. Mm. But everyone still knew him as a dancer more than a rapper. That's what it was. But um, he was going as Prince. Yeah, yep, Prince. Prince. I was. I did. I made a couple. Cash songs was cash, right? I made it, yeah, it was always cash. Always been. Cash. I made a couple songs. Cash with them has all back always the been day. cash. Fucking um, what was that other? Oh fuck. Why are you well, thinking that? Obviously, JPG. And then there was another little young bull. I forget his name. Kev. Lil Kev. D? No, not Lil D. The other little young bull. He was short. You got me there. I'm done. There was another one. No, it wasn't I'm significant not. for me in There's school, at least. One. But, um, what were you saying? I forget what I was going to say. About being yourself and, and how Cash was always dude. being himself. And not many people know how to be themselves. Yeah, Cash. Yeah, he was just giving him shout outs. They show him love whenever <laughs> I can. Because you and Cash he was, was a, he was a fucking the, wild the guy. The dynamic between y'all was crazy too. I was well, looking at his videos. We didn't chill until until like later on in life. Like I said, like when I was in Arizona, I saw everybody just started posting raps on SoundCloud and like saying they were the best and blah blah blah. And I had this I had the ideas of the ciphers before I moved back. And I was like Everybody from every town, and I'm going to start in Marlton, because that's where I'm from. Marlton, And the second right. cypher I'm going to do is Collingswood. What year was that? Like, 2012. Like right after. Right after yeah. we graduated, 2011. So, yeah. I did, like, tw- I did Co- Marlton and then Collingswood. And then, obviously, after Collingswood, I did... Um, you did Camden. Uh, I did you Cher- did no, I did Cherry Hill after Collingswood, and then Camden and... This and is chronological order? Yeah, that's, like, the order. 
Cause, and I did Camden because I sat at the lunch table with DJ Cooley. DJ Cooley. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Shout out to DJ Cooley, man. Hope he's doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. I think well. he is. I think, I think like, I, I'd, be, I'd be checking up on people's pages every now and then just to see where they're at. Like, but, It's um, all a journey, baby. Yeah, but that's that's how those went. And um, obviously, uh, Ish, Ish and Cash were in the Collingswood cipher. But um, then... I like that shit blew up before like it went viral before viral. So I rode that wave and then me and Cash linked back up right when I started to link up, up with my guy Jimmy D's, rest in peace, who from the Morristown cipher. Jeez, my man. And he was <laughs> and he was on the um on the Morristown cipher and he he was the he got connected with Ethic. Shout out to my guy Ray and they um this they, is when I started seeing things popping up. Yeah, and that's, that's when I start. Well, that's when I came back because I had I rode the wave of the popularity from the shit and didn't continue. The girl I've ever always ever wanted became my girl. Like all all the things I ever wanted in life, I became the everyone who called me a wigger wanted to be my friend. Like full three full one eighty three sixty fifty thousand times from what my life was. I moved to Arizona, came back, and I was the fucking shit. Oh damn! But I'm a nice guy, so I didn't ride the wave like that. I just rode the wave and like, yeah, let's party, let's fucking rage. And I raged and got a DUI. When I got oh. a DUI, that's why I got stuck down here. Mm. So when I got stuck down here, I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a take a step back for a year or two, like stack the fuck up because I'm gonna owe the government fucking fifty thousand dollars. Damn, my man was raging. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I already, I always knew, like, the second I'm, like, good in a year or two, I'm going to bust the fuck back with the ciphers, regardless where hip-hop goes. And when I came back, Jimmy Dees was connected with Ethic. Mm. So Jimmy Dees was like, pop the fuck out. Because, like, Jimmy Dees would always, like, always say to me, like, at that point, that I was a major reason for him even continuing to rap. Because when that cipher popped, he got a lot of love and a lot of record, like, rec- uh, recognition and places to go and make music at and shit. So yeah, it came full circle. You gave people platforms. It, yeah, and that was just natural. They gave themselves the platform. That's the thing. And that's love. Why you, what you see right there is showing mm-hmm. love. You know, he's, he's being humble and modest about it. But truthfully, people was like, yo, th- who's this cat? I need yeah. to hop onto a cypher. Where's mm-hmm. the meetup location? <laughs> Facts. Yeah, well, like, it, yeah, because it's distasteful. And I'm like, fuck y'all. I did all that shit. But, like, in reality, it was for all of that's us. Love. It was for everybody. And um and it came full circle and he was like yeah well ethic kind of needs ciphers and shit so I, that's how I started throwing the ethic ciphers and I did a Pittsburgh ethic cipher and Jimmy was supposed to come and he didn't and that was the night Jimmy passed and right around that time is when me and Cash linked back up because obviously oh. I was like Cash I need you to rap at the cipher like because he was about to make a comeback and he fucking did. And he recorded singles. He got a couple videos done, and he came out to the ciphers. And I Cash still is, watch it to this day. Cash is wild, you when know. You Cash see the is slow, fucking wild. slow digit rising up. It's been his <laughs> close friends who just wanted to hear his voice. So that's when me and Cash linked up, and it was just energy because I was I started throwing shows too instead of like when just you go, throwing. We gonna drop the musics, man. You, are you holding on to? No, I drop music every fucking week with with him. Oh, I've been following. Oh, him. with his, his music, mm-hmm. all that's out. Yeah, oh. I fucking I wish there was more, man. I wish we were supposed to link a lot of times. You know how that shit goes, but um, Let's do it but for yeah, the art, so, baby. Yeah, so that's why, like, it's it's never it's never it's never gonna be the right time for anybody. So that's why, like, I feel like it's my duty to do some sort of documentation or you know documentary about them to sh- to show how them. much they were loved because everybody in that do- the uh, tribute that I did. Like, the stories that were told, like, they were all completely different versions of him. Like, one girl, it was, she, it was, his, it was her first boyfriend when she was 12 mm-hmm. years old, 13. Mm-hmm. And it, she described him in a completely different light. And then another, like, friend from that age of how he would rage on the fucking trail, like, train tracks and just do crazy shit. It's just complete, and then me. The, o- the only vision I, the only vision I have of him is rapping. Like literally, we've only linked and rapped and made music and yep. performed. So, so off camera, I actually got a video I can show you. I don't know if you might have seen it because I got it off of probably YouTube or some bullshit. I don't know, mm-hmm. but he was raging, and you're gonna laugh. You can hear his laugh, and it's gonna. I think 
I got you later. I got you, <laughs> dude. Later. I got I got some shit I gotta show you too. Like, it's oh me, man, I'm not ready, man. Music, like, <laughs> a, I have a lot of music I'm sitting on, but I just been dropping shit just to drop it. But the shit with him, I kind of released it right away. Like, I had to get it out right away for for people, you know. But I do have his whole other catalog. Like, I, it t- took me a long time to convince his little brother, but I was like, yo. Give me his laptop so I can download all the shit. Because I did that tribute on a terrible laptop that could not handle the space. And it was choppy. Like, I could not edit. The rendering was terrible. Dude, I couldn't do anything. And I fucking did it. At least I got it. You know, I got it done. This was like a year before I built the PC. So, I was dealing with, like, I had to get something, you know. So, it's it fucking worked, though. But... Like I said, damn motherfucker. No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> like I said, um, fucking editing and shit. Like with with that uh with that render shit, it's like that's a nightmare, bro. It's like it's like playing online video games in early two thousand. Fucking you can't four. save. No memory card. Can't do it. And even when you do <laughs> save, it like disappears somehow. It's just some crazy shit. Or could the file get corrupted? Because it didn't save Fuck. all the way. <laughs> it's so fucked. Real. That was rough. What was? During those times growing up, we I seen floppy disk. Oh, word. <laughs> Come on. I seen floppy disk. I seen games, had popularity, died. Yeah, like, and now... You that could we, get emulators. Now when I play video games, it's like... I haven't... I didn't play video games for, like, seven years. And then when I built the PC... Obviously, I downloaded a bunch oh, of shit. PC is life. And the fucking... The way that it sucks up time is insane. Like, three hours will go by, and Bro. you, like, gotta go, gotta take a piss, and you just don't even care. And then you're the, on it for six uh, another three hours, so that's six total? Yeah, it just keeps... They make bots to remind you to j- hydrate. It's been so... Apps. Really? Everything. They make everything nowadays to to accommodate a human's conveniency. To be a robot. To be a robot. Yeah, as when your body you're tells you you're, you're dehydrated, you need water. Like, I'm going to take a small sip right now. Yeah, listen if to your you're body. you're a robot, we'll, go, we'll hook you up with everything as long as you're a robot. So, um, Hook you up with everything. <laughs> so I got to ask you a question. I gotta yes. Find something. Go ahead. Hit, hit me with the question. Hit me with the question. Huh. Well, here it is. <sighs> if you had to fight to the death, mm-hmm. could you do it with this? Yeah. How would you do it? How would I do it? And your opponent has that, and they you can only use that. No elbows, no nothing. This is tough. Let's see. I'll keep it like that. i keep it somewhere tucked inside so I could give my fist a better chance. I could no probably fist, use this for a fist. It has to be that. It just has to be straight up. It has to be that. Straight up, how would you kill somebody that's trying to kill you with I that? I crack it right right down. Seems very solid. Grab a sharp edge. Like, and now, like, ding, ding, ding. Here comes the guy with that. Bro, I'm scratching him with this. Scratching I'm, it? I'm going off. I'm going off with him with this. <laughs> like, what's up? He's going to get dee I'm going off. That's the only rule, right? So I can't, I can't no elbows nah, with nah, this. Let me see it. Like, mm. Let me see it. No, what, you're going to take my weapon from me? No, I got to see it. I got to see, <laughs> see how it would work. That wouldn't work. Your hand's going to hurt. Maybe like that. Yeah, like that. It's the only way. Just keep it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that's that's the vibe. Hold on, let me see. It's a nice little grip, actually. Wow. You throw a major hook with oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a see. major hook with that. Just keep pounding. Right in the temple one right time. Right in the temple, the eye eye area, the temple. Yeah. Hey. Hey. There on. it is. It's just because of the curvature. The, the curv- manner of it. The curvature. <laughs> I like the ombre the gradient curve. effect of the color too. Dude, like the curve, the curvature. Cur- curvature. 
That looks like a spectrum right there. Like a, well, like a that's how he would. That's how he would do it, dude. That's how he would do it. Is that is that the only question? Yeah, that's the question. Oh man. Oh, I'm pretty stoned. Oh, thank that's you good. for that joint. That's good. You you're being healed. I think we should smoke some dabs. I'm ready. We're we gonna do the on camera or off camera. Off, cause I want to like kill myself. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate right. you having me here, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, bro. I really do you do have anything it. you want to say to people, like to yourself, to your future self, to your past self? No, nah, I'm tired. I'm tired of my past self. It's <laughs> always ahead of me. Facts. Putting him behind me. What do you want to tell your future self? My future self? You look good because you're relaxed. Facts. Mm-hmm. You look good because you're relaxed. You look good because you're relaxed. Yeah. Thank you for sliding, dog. Appreciate you, man. Anytime. Yes, sir. See you guys. Deuce.